Hello, welcome to lecture number 4 of module 3. This is lecture number 10 of this course and in this lecture we will continue discussing entanglement measures. So let us begin. In the last class we discussed about two entanglement measures namely entropy of entanglement which is also known as reduced von Neumann entropy and the so called Perry's Horodoki criterion. Uh, more popularly known as PPT criterion or positive partial transpose and this criterion led to an entanglement measure called negativity and we discussed several examples related to entropy of entanglement and negativity. Uh, in fact, the entropy of entanglement was defined as, so this was defined as entropy of entanglement which is one of the most important entanglement measure is given by this s represents entropy it's a function of the reduced density matrix that's why it is called reduced von neumann entropy uh, trace rho a logarithm of rho a with base 2 log is taken to be uh, is taken over base 2 and it's for subsystem subsystem a similar formula we can write for subsystem b as well and on the other hand the formula for the negativity we wrote as it was represented by the symbol it italicized n it's a function of the density operator rho and it is given by the trace norm uh, taken over the partially transpose uh, taken partial transpose over the subsystem B uh, and this is the trace norm rho TB uh, is the partially transpose matrix and then you take the transpose uh, trace norm and this is the formula and the subsystem B is said to be entangled with the system A we should get negativity to be non-zero the similarly we can find out the negativity with respect to the subsystem uh, a as well okay now negativity leads immediately to an another uh, convenient measure of entanglement called logarithmic negativity logarithmic negativity and this is represented by the symbol e subscript n it's a function of the density operator and it is defined as logarithm of the, of the trace norm of the partially transpose uh, matrix uh, density operator not density operator after you take the partial transpose over the density operator rho representing the two composite system a and b and you take the partial transpose over the system b uh, or uh, subsystem b right and to this is the formula and this is very useful it's uh, it's very easy to work out in fact let us uh, do a quick example taken uh, we we considered this particular state uh, in the last class as well so let us just consider that once again suppose a composite system is represented by this uh, k state 1 by root 2 k 0 0 plus k 1 1 and we intend to find out the logarithmic negativity with respect to say the subsystem b and we have worked this out in the last class the density operator we had we have worked out and then we worked out the partially transposed uh, matrix when we have taken the partial transpose over the system b subsystem b and we found the partially transposed uh, matrix to be of this form it would be here 1 0 0 0 0 0 1 0 uh, 0 1 0 0 0 0 0 1 and this uh, will give us the we worked it out the eigenvalues of this uh, matrix eigenvalues of rho tb we got them to be one half one half one half and minus one half this led us to the fact that the negativity was turned out to be non-zero and 
uh, this uh, matrix rho tb is not a valid density matrix because it is not a semi-positive definite and the trace norm we can calculate rho tb that would be equal to trace of uh, you know modulus of rho tb trace norm if you take and this is basically equal to the sum of all the uh, eigenvalues the magnitude of the eigenvalues so in this case we will get it to be uh, plus 2 therefore logarithmic negativity is would turn out to be uh, in this case would be log of 2 base 2 so this would be equal to 1 so you see the logarithmic negativity is a non-zero quantity here which uh, indicates that the subsystem a and b are entangled this is a trivial example but we can uh, work out many many examples uh, uh, and we already know that the state that we have taken is a bell state and this is an entangled state and yes the logarithmic negativity also shows that uh, that also gives the correct measure that indeed the system uh, subsystem a and b are entangled but uh, unlike negativity however there is a difference logarithmic negativity can be zero so let me write it unlike uh, negativity logarithmic negativity logarithmic negativity can be zero even if can be zero even if even if the state is entangled state is entangled so one have to be very careful one cannot just conclude that just because you are getting logarithmic negativity to be zero that the state is not entangled but for sure if the logarithmic negativity is not zero the state is entangled but if you find it to be zero sometime what may happen is that the system may be entangled actually and logarithmic negativity another important property of logarithmic negativity is that or effect associated logarithmic negativity that logarithmic negativity uh, is an upper bound is an upper bound to the distillable entanglement to the distillable entanglement now we have not talked about distillable, uh, distillable entanglement as yet uh, so we are going to discuss that but before i discuss it let me once again clarify the idea of quantification of entanglement in the context of locc or local quantum operational classical communication you see we want to know given two subsystem a and b at a far away distance what is the degree of entanglement between them and to know that some experiment which mathematically speaking unitary operation needs to be made on subsystem a, a a or b locally however this local operation should not increase the entanglement between a and b for example the system a and system b suppose uh, their composite system is represented by the density operator rho a plus b and if the system are say two spin half system and you rotate the spin system a as a part of some measurement process this operation should not increase the entanglement between a and b hope you get the idea uh, so that means that local measurements or local unitary operations local measurement measurement process must not this is extremely critical uh, for us must must not increase uh, entanglement between entanglement between a and b because ultimately when we say entanglement measure that means we have to carry out some measurement or unitary operations and because these are measurement and this local measurement should not increase the entanglement between a and b entanglement may uh, decrease actually but it should not increase uh, entanglement between them okay this is very important entanglement entanglement may decrease as a result of this process but 
it should not or it must not if it has to be a proper entanglement measure it must not increase entanglement entanglement between the two subsystem between them okay you can do local operation plus classical communication that means LOCC you can do but this LOCC should not increase entanglement this is the general rule for entanglement which we discussed in an earlier class on the properties of entanglement to give you an example uh, let us say we have two qubits uh, two qubits belonging to a and other one qubit belonging to a and other qubit belonging to b uh, here you can consider a and b to be ellis and bob and they share a bell state they share a bell state let us say phi plus so a and b ellis and bob share a bell state phi plus and you know that phi plus is is 1 by root 2 k 0 0 plus k to 1 1 or if it is a spin system i can write it as 1 by root 2 so spin up up and spin down down right so this is what we mean by phi plus bell state uh, you already know that this is maximally entangled these bells all bell states are maximally entangled states this is maximally entangled all right this maximally entangled state in what sense this is maximally entangled state in the sense maximally entangled in the this is important to understand in the sense that from it from it we can create we can create any other any other qubit state qubit state using LOCC or some clever you know local operations and classical communi communication protocols or process if we using LOCC from this we can create for example let us say we we are starting with phi plus which is 1 by root 2 in the case of spin hub system I can write it as a up up and down down state and by using LOCC what I can get by some unitary operations I can end up in the state uh, 1 by root 2 I just flip the uh, spin of uh, say Bob and then uh, I get accordingly I get some local operations I get this particular state and this is also this is nothing but in our 0 1 notation it is 1 by root 2 uh, k 0 1 plus k 1 0 which is another uh, bell state uh, we have we are basically getting another bell state starting with phi plus uh, sometimes we may get uh, this is from uh, here we are getting a maximally entangled state from a maximally entangled state but sometimes we get an entangled state which may not be maximally entangled state this idea of getting other state from a given state through LOCC means that we can compare the states to find which one is having more entanglement uh, let me write it this is very critical for us this idea of getting other states other states from a given state from a given state i'm talking about entangled state here through through locc means that means that we can we can compare the states to find which one is more entangled which one is having more entanglement so this is basically the essence of entanglement measure so suppose you go from state one to state two you have started with a state one and you get another state via LOCC local operation quantum operation and classical communication or you get 
state one from state two via LOCC, right? Then the question we can ask is that what about the entanglement? Whether entanglement associated with state one is more than or uh, that of the entanglement in state two or vice versa that means entanglement state two is more than that of entanglement in state one this kind of question we can ask now but sometimes however there are situations where states are incompar incomparable and we cannot go from a state say rho to another state say rho prime via LOCC it is not possible or we cannot go from the state rho prime to the state rho via LOCC so this is also a possibility and in that case we can't tell which one is having more entanglement we cannot do an ordering in this case that means we cannot say that entanglement of uh, state one is uh, more than that of entanglement in state two or we cannot say that e2 is you know entanglement of state state two is more or less that of entanglement in state one this kind of uh, uh, ordering would not be possible if we cannot create uh, one state uh, from another state right you i hope you get the idea now the question is that is there a way out in this uh, situations yes there is uh, there is a way instead of uh, simply working on only two qubit states let us deal with a huge number of say thousands thousands of copies of this qubit state for example suppose we have this bell state uh, phi plus let us make a uh, thousand copies or whatever number of copies you want you make huge number of identical copies basically ensembles you you, you create and you have suppose this much of copies suppose thousand copies let us say you have thousand copies of phi plus and then you can ask questions such as with this thousand copies of our two qubit stays are we able uh, to produce say 50,000 copies or so of another two qubits suppose via LOCC can I create some other state some arbitrary state say psi k psi uh, some copies suppose you have started with thousand maybe you can create thousand or ten thousand or fifty thousand whatever number of copies is it possible to do that let us say we have started with thousand let us say you get another 50 5000 copies of another arbitrary state k psi starting with one particular bell state okay this this particular approach uh, turns out to be quite helpful say we take n copies of row suppose we have n number of copies of row that means we have uh, row uh, direct product row direct product row like this n times we are having n copies of row so we are having n copies of row and via LOCC we want us uh, we can get another state having say another state say row prime having m number of copies we have started with n number of copies now we are going over to creating m number of copies using LOCC uh, okay and the question here we can ask is if we allow the number of copies of row number of copies of row to go towards in infinity say n tends to infinity this one if we allow it to go towards infinity and m also here this m also tends to infinity uh, then what is the best possible ratio the question is what is the what is the best possible best possible uh, ratio ratio of m by n okay that means what is the best possible ratio of m by n this is the question we can ask that means what we can achieve uh, this has been the basis of various entanglement measure and it would be clear if i discuss some entanglement measure based on this particular idea 
we always want to compare states with regard to entanglement but what will you compare against now the question is well uh, we know that bell states are maximally entangled so we can compare against such bell states okay so given some say arbitrary state given some arbitrary state given some arbitrary state how many bell state how many bell states because bell states are maximally entangled state how many bell states we would need we would need to produce to produce these arbitrary states produce these arbitrary states okay starting with a bell state or we can ask the opposite question given some arbitrary state given some arbitrary state if we apply we apply some clever some clever unitary operation unitary operation okay on many such copies on many such copies of this arbitrary state copies of state how many bell states opposite thing we are doing how many bell states we can produce how many bell states uh, can we obtain can we obtain so this is the essence of some entanglement measures that now i am going to discuss so i hope uh, you are getting the idea let me uh, again uh, uh, say again, again uh, state this once again suppose you have n number of suppose you have n number of copies copies of a bell state bell state there are four bell state suppose you pick up any bell state and you take n number of copies of the bell state and by locc operation local quantum operation and classical communication you get m number of copies of arbitrary state arbitrary state row right and we are doing it because as i said ki bell state has is maximally entangled and we would like to compare our created state with a maximally entangled state or this is one thing or we have say n number of arbitrary state m number of copies of arbitrary arbitrary state row and via locc local operations and classical communication we want to create m number of uh, copies m number of copies of bell state so this particular idea is at the root of many entanglement measures and we are now going to discuss some of them the first entanglement measure based on these ideas i want to discuss is the so called entanglement cost entanglement cost and this is denoted by the symbol e suffix c c refers to cost and it's a function of the uh, density operator and here rho rho represents the density operator representing the arbitrary state the concept behind this measure is simple say we have one of the maximally entangled bell state say phi plus the density operator corresponding to this bell state would be k phi plus bra phi plus and let us say we have r into n number of copies of this bell state and we hope to uh, using local operation and classical communication we hope to create an arbitrary state rho and we want to create n number of copies of this arbitrary state 
and here we the goal is to find out the smallest r for which this is possible then tells us about what is the cost of producing the entangled state so entanglement cost boils down to basically finding out find smallest r find smallest r with you will start with i am repeating myself here you will start with say the particular maximally or any maximally entangled state and from here you create via locc local operation and classical communication you create n number of arbitrary states and there is a actually another measure related to this this is called distillable entanglement let me discuss that also and in fact i have already mentioned about it a while back distillable entanglement this is similar to entanglement cost and that's the reason it is called dual to entanglement cost and it is denoted by the symbol e suffix d rho and uh, here we you just go to other direction to that of the entanglement cost you take uh, n number of arbitrary states you take n number of arbitrary state and from this arbitrary state you produced maximally entangled state say phi plus you produce r number of r number of uh, maximally entanglement state entangled state and here the idea is to have uh, you know maximum number maximum r that means find largest r so entanglement of distillation or distillable entanglement boils down to find largest r largest r with you are going from an arbitrary n number of copies of the arbitrary state with maximum number of bell state you want to generate uh, starting with some number of copies of an arbitrary state and which is opposite to that of the entanglement cause as you can see and this should also be clear to you intuitively that entanglement of distillation or distillable entanglement should be less than the cost of entanglement cost because if it is not then uh, you see one can obtain or create entanglement by means of locc by converting bell state to a state uh, not satisfying this particular relation uh, this condition and converting uh, them back again right uh, for pure state things are quite easy for pure state for pure state you have rho is equal to k psi bra psi and here it turns out that cost of entanglement is exactly equal to uh, entanglement distillable entanglement and which turns out to be equal to entropy of entanglement okay and this is uh, easy for pure state but for mixed state uh, finding cost of entanglement or distillable entanglement is a difficult task it's in fact pretty difficult but whatever be the entanglement measure it is expected that you should get entanglement for a non separable system to be should be greater than zero and it has to be equal to zero rho a plus b if it is uh, this is a separable state or uh, that means it is not entangled obviously you should get it to be zero rho a plus b is separable separable and locc local operation and classical communication does not does not increase entanglement measure e rho on the average okay this is has to be any entanglement measure must has to satisfy this if all these three are satisfied then uh, then e rho the entanglement measure uh, actually e rho this quantity is known as i think i have discussed about it in a previous class e rho is known as entanglement monotone entanglement monotone uh, 
but uh, if there is an other uh, property a desirable property that for pure state if you have e rho is equal to entropy of entanglement entropy of entanglement whatever be the measure if boils down to entropy of entanglement for pure states this is desirable and if these four properties in fact if all these properties are satisfied then e rho is turned is called entanglement measure then e rho is qualified to be called entanglement measure entanglement measure so i just want to re-emphasize it that's why because i have already discussed it in a previous class let us now briefly discuss about the entanglement measure called entanglement of formation historically this is the first entanglement measure that appeared in literature it is also occasionally called entanglement of creation i mentioned that one desirable property of entanglement measure is that it should be equal to entropy of entanglement for pure states now the entanglement of formation is a straightforward generalization of entropy of entanglement for mixed state entanglement of formation is denoted by the symbol e suffix f and it's a function of the density operator rho now before i talk about the proper definition of entanglement of formation let me discuss briefly about the definition of entropy of entanglement in the context of a an ensemble of pure state suppose i have an ensemble of pure state e which is a collection of pure state psi i with corresponding probability p i then the entropy of entanglement uh, or entanglement of formation is defined as the average of the entropy of entanglement for the states in the ensemble and it is given by this formula e f of uh, e keep it uh, italicized e which refers to this ensemble it is equal to sum over p i and e of psi i where e is the this is the entropy of entanglement for the pure state psi i it is entropy of entanglement entanglement for pure state if I write it in the density operator, then it would be rho i is equal to k psi i bra psi i. So this is the definition for entanglement of formation for an ensemble. Now coming to mixed state, you know, a mixed state can be realized by a multitude of pure state ensembles with different entanglement of formation. Suppose I have a, you know, mixed state rho given by a collection of bell states suppose i have this pure states are there phi plus phi plus this is with 50 percent probability then i have another uh, collection so let me take half common there so this means that this is a mixed state uh, you know which is formed by the pure state phi plus and phi minus and what uh, we can get that this particular mixed state rho can also be achieved by having a mixer of uh, k zero zero a pure state uh, a mixer of pure state k zero zero and k one one right so this way there are many ways uh, you can get the same rho by various mixers now as any of those ensemble realize a mixed state the natural definition for the entanglement of formation for a mixed state is the uh, entanglement formation for the most economic ensemble that is the ensemble causing least cost of entanglement so entanglement formation for a mixed state is defined as e f of rho is equal to infimum summation sum over i p i e of psi i where this is the entropy of entanglement this is entropy of entanglement okay now you see this infimum is uh, taken over all the ensemble it is taken over all the ensemble pi 
psi i or if I again take this example here uh, entanglement formation means that out of these two possibilities suppose I have only these two mixers two possible mixers are there by which I can get this uh, mixed state row and out of these mixers when I am taking the infimum I will consider only one of these two for who is the entropy of entanglement is going to be minimum so i hope you get it by infimum i means that i am taking this collection of sets i will take the take that one for which i get the minimum uh, entropy of entanglement now as you can see that entanglement of formation basically me quantifies how much entanglement is necessary on the average to prepare the state so entanglement formation entanglement formation quantifies quantifies how much entanglement is needed entanglement is needed to prepare a state okay now it turns out that for very large n for very large n the entanglement of formation for n number of say copies of a state uh, row represented by row entanglement of formation for a large number of copies of a state row uh, if we divide it by the number of copies and in the limit n tends to infinity that means very large n then this quantity approaches or converses the uh, cost of entanglement or entanglement cost okay this is an important uh, point to remember now there is a useful entanglement measure called concurrence and this is generally defined in the context of two qubits and also associated with uh, or related with entanglement of formation and this is uh, we are not going to discuss that in great detail but I will just very uh, simply discussed it for a system of two qubits and for first of all I will discuss it for pure state and suppose for a pure state uh, we have a uh, state kth state which represents a two qubit state uh, this represents a pair of pair of qubits and concurrence for this state pure state phi is defined as the modulus of the scalar product of phi and phi tilde where this tilde let me write here where tilde represents the spin flip operation spin flip operation let me elaborate this phi tilde Kate phi tilde is uh, is equal to the direct product or the tensor product of this Pauli operator sigma y over this operation is this is the spleen flip operation done on the state phi star kate where phi star is uh, this kate phi star is the complex conjugate this is complex conjugate of conjugate of phi in fact let me explain it uh, by using an example uh, just remember that that sigma y the Pauli uh, matrix is given as 0 minus i i 0 suppose I have a state kate phi uh, in the computational uh, 2 qubit basis uh, where the basis is k 0 0 k 0 1 k 1 0 and k 1 1 in this basis state I can write a uh, 2 qubit state 
a general two p qubit state may be say superposition of this basic state a k zero zero plus b k zero one plus c k one zero plus d k one one and this I can write in a column matrix uh, of this form that would be A, B, C, D, right? And phi star, k phi star would be the complex conjugate of this. So that would be A star, B star, C star, D star, all right? And therefore phi tilde, let us work it out. It's very simple. You just have to work out what is the tensor product of sigma y sigma y and this operates on phi star k phi star and sigma y tensor product sigma y if you work it out then you will get this matrix 0 0 0 minus 1 0 0 1 0 0 1 0 0 minus 1 0 0 0 this is sigma y tensor product sigma y and phi tilde k phi tilde star uh, is a st no, no phi star only k phi star would be a star b star c star d star and if you do the operation then it's easy to see that you are going to get minus d star c star b star minus a star so the inner product therefore we will get inner product of phi and phi tilde star no actually phi tilde only right this is what our phi tilde this is phi tilde so this would be equal to bra phi is the row matrix a row vector a b c d and phi tilde is minus d star c star b star minus a star so if you do the operation matrix multiplication if you do you will get minus a d star plus b c star plus c b star minus d a star all right so as per the definition of concurrence for this pure state phi it is you have to take the modulus of this scalar product phi phi tilde so this is will give you you are taking the modulus so you will get twice of bc minus ad Okay, so this is the concurrence for a general state that we have got. Uh, now you see that uh, if, uh, in fact, uh, we know this result from our a very early class of this course. Suppose you have this general state phi is equal to a 0 0 plus b 0 1 plus c 1 0 plus d11 one one, k11 one one, and this state you can show it very easily is separable and in fact we have done it earlier it is separable if this condition is satisfied if ad is equal to bc okay what does that mean uh, in that case you will see from here the concurrence would turn out to be zero uh, let me give a uh, one example suppose a is equal to 1 by root 2 and say b is also equal to 1 by root 2 c is also equal to 1 by root 2 and d is equal to 1 by root 2 for this simple example uh, in that case we will have this a d is equal to b c if that is so it's straightforward to show that phi is equal to uh, half and you will have k 0 0 plus k 0 1 plus k 10 plus k 11 and this you can express as a product state it would be 1 by root 2 k 0 plus k 1 uh, tensor product or direct product to it 1 by root 2 k 0 plus k 1 right this means that 
when ad is equal to bc that this general state is separable or in the language of concordance this means that if concordance is equal to 0 that means uh, the qubits the qubit qubit state the two qubit state is separable separable on the other hand if this concurrence c phi for the pure state if it is not equal to zero this means the qubits the qubits are entangled okay so this is a very simple measure please note that the spleen flip operation phi tilde is equal to sigma y tensor product sigma y phi star get phi star can be easily expressed in terms of density corresponding density operator as well and in terms of density operator you can easily get that this can be written in this form rho tilde is equal to sigma y tensor product sigma y rho star sigma y tensor product sigma y now the concurrence can be defined in the context of a mixed state of two qubits as well so let me discuss concurrence for mixed state for mixed state of two qubits i will discuss it very briefly and it is defined as in the context of mixed state it is defined as the average average concurrence of an ensemble of an ensemble of pure states representing representing the state row minimized over all minimized over all decomposition of row all decompositions of row mathematically i can write it as c row is equal to infimum which is in other words uh, taking minimum of this set of you know collection or set of these uh, pure states over which i am calculating the concurrence so this is what the formula or the definition and this is concurrence of pure state phi z okay now this concurrence zero lies between zero and one and zero is equal to zero uh, you can easily guess that zero is equal to zero means that the qubits are not entangled qubits are separable and qubits are not entangled and 0 is equal to 1 means that the qubits are maximally entangled are maximally entangled okay now there is a formula uh, to calculate concurrence for a mixed state of two qubits and it is given by i'm not going to discuss how this formula has come it's a little bit involved but this formula just let me mention it is going to be maximum of this um, say lambda square root of lambda one minus square root of lambda 2 minus square root of lambda 3 minus square root of lambda 4 0 where 
lambda 1 is greater than or equal to lambda 2 lambda 2 is greater than or equal to lambda 3 and lambda 3 is greater than or equal to lambda 4 and these are actually eigenvalues these are eigenvalues of rho tilde which we have defined earlier let me stop here our discussion on quantum entanglement measures with regard to discrete quantum system uh, in problem solving session number four we will discuss some problems related to quantum entanglement measures and other issues uh, in the next class we will uh, start discussing some applications of quantum entanglement and also i will very briefly touch upon the topic of quantum entanglement measure in the context of continuous variable system so uh, see you in the next class thank you so much